So one of the most requested videos on my channel is you guys have been asking me how do I deep clean all of my detailing tools after I do all these disaster deep clean videos. And to be honest, it is something I've never actually shown in depth. So today I'm going to break it down for you on how I deep clean all of my buckets, how I deep clean these amazing nasty shop vacs, my extractor, my brushes and my drill brushes and my microfiber towels to make them look like new. So that way they're ready for the next detail. Now this is the first time you've actually watched any of my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and thumbs up for these sort of videos, but also for the videos that I make that are the disaster deep cleans that show you from the start to beginning how to deep clean your car. Now the first item that I want to talk about is how do I deep clean my buckets and these buckets in particular are used for cleaning wheels, they're used for draining my extractor fluids, they're more used for the buckets that are just kind of the beater buckets if you will, so the ones that contain the most dirt. And for these ones I'm just using my all purpose cleaner to spray the inside and the outside and then I have this bristle brush that are long haired br bristles so that way it gets into all those different cracks and corners of the bucket itself um, to scrub it clean and kind of get that you know dirty water that's been sitting there for a while agitated so that way we can get this thing completely rinsed out and clean as possible. A lot of the times it's not uncommon that sometimes you forget a bucket or you need an extra wash water bucket that's completely clean water for using the exterior of your car. So you never know when the bucket is going to be used for multiple different things. So that's why I always like to scrub them very, very thoroughly, clean them really well, and that way they're ready for the next job. Once they're clean, they do come in handy for holding trash bags, which will definitely come in handy for this next item that we're going to deep clean, which is the vacuums. And by doing this, this allows you to have a, some sort of smaller container than a large trash can to dump all of the stuff and all the crap that we pull out of this, this vacuum itself um, and then throw it away at the very end. Now, for this vacuum, it has been sitting for probably about a week. Um, that's my own fault here because I actually used it to extract some carpets uh, to get a remaining little bit of water that was in them out. Um, and what happens is, is over just a week period of time, you can get a pretty nasty sludge inside of there. And I had a little break between details and this is what happens. And if you have a vacuum that does have stuff caked inside of it, a putty knife for putting on plaster on a wall or fixing holes comes in handy to scrape it clean in the inside, which you guys can see here. Um, it definitely makes it a lot easier than using your fingers or just trying to blast all this stuff out with a hose because if you do, all of that gunk and crap is just gonna go everywhere. Um, probably spray back on you, which is always a fun experience. Um, but also it just, you know, it's much easier just to throw it all in the trash can, get majority of it out, and then just rinse it out with a sprayer. Keep 
One thing I want to do for all of you guys that are subscribed is I want to give away one of these Vac Master vacuums that I ha I use in my videos. I own two of them. They're really portable. They work really well. And all you need to do is just comment down below what is your number one go-to detailing product, whether it's a spray, whether it's a tool. Just go ahead and comment down below what is your number one detailing product that you like to use to keep your car clean. So that way, not only do you get entered in to win one of these that I'll announce in next week's video, but also it'll give everybody ideas of other products to try out to up their detailing game. Now with majority of it removed, it's just using all-purpose cleaner to completely soak the inside of this thing. Make sure you get into every corner, make sure you get every little lip seal, so that way we can get this thing clean as possible. Now, if you don't know, I sell these type of brushes on foxclean.com, which is my own personal brand. But because I go through so many brushes, I do have sacrificial brushes that are used for wheels, they're used for the dirtiest parts of the car, and then they're used for jobs like this, which this is obviously the dirtiest of the dirtiest that could ever happen for a bristle brush. So um, they take a beating, but they last a long time. I just have certain brushes used for certain things as I go along through detail. And I'll show you later on how I clean these bristle brushes as well. Now an item that I use in a lot of my videos that you don't see is I use vacuum bags that are inside the vacuum so that way all the dirt gets captured inside there keeping the filter clean and keeping all of it contained in the bag so this basin doesn't get dirty like this. But what can happen is, is one, I forget to order some new ones, I forget to put them in, but two, what can happen is, is if I have wet floors or if you soak up any liquids, you kind of have you know a problem just from that standpoint because the vacuum bags are made out of paper they completely get disintegrated and can fall apart. Um, so yeah, for me personally, if I'm doing something that has a wet job or if I'm gonna be soaking up any water, I skip the vacuum bag altogether.
For me, this job of cleaning up all of these tools like this in depth, I usually try to do this once every two to three weeks, depending on how many details I do. Um, you know, I always try to empty out my basin after every detail, but if you have um, a lot of the dirty stuff that kind of gets caked in there over time, usually, like I said, it's about two to three weeks between details um, that I do this sort of deep clean. Now an item you might not consider to clean is the inside of your vacuum hose. And what can happen is you can actually build up a thin wall inside your hose um, that even if you have a vacuum bag or even if you have you know a clean basin, as soon as you turn it on, a lot of that stuff might come flying in. So I always try to rinse it out, get a lot of that stuff out because you can get mold, you can get dirt, you can get things caked inside these things. Um, and just by vacuuming out, it does help with increased airflow because you're not having that thin layer around the inside of the tube. Um, plus, it's just great sanitary practice. That way you don't get any odors or smells happening over time and you really don't know where they're coming from. Now the good thing about these filters is if you get like the majority of the stuff, like if it's got caked on hair on the outside, just remove that by hand. But then just taking a simple garden hose with a light pressure sprayer, majority of the stuff just kind of rinses right off really, really quickly. And I do this, you know, probably once a week on my filters, depending on how much dirt I am or how much fine dust is being removed from these cars that I detail. Um, but just by spraying them clean and then let them sit out in the sun and they'll dry out really, really quickly. Now this will last a good while, you know, you can do this for a good amount of time, but eventually you will have to remove and completely replace the filter itself. Um, that's just inevitable, um, but for me personally, it does take a couple months to three months to, you know, completely use a filter out to the point where I feel that's necessary. But I do a lot more details that are more in depth and heavier duty and a lot dirtier than probably a lot of the details you guys do. Now for anybody that's squirming right now and, and kind of upset that I'm spraying the bottom of this thing and how am I going to wash this thing with the motor on the top of it, um, these things are made to do this. They have you know, vents in the top on the back side that you can't see here that are made for the air intake for the motors and the bottoms of these things can get dirty. They will get pretty nasty just like the inside and the manufacturers of shop vacs know that eventually these things will have to be cleaned. But for me, when you guys spray these things down, if you're cleaning your own, just be cautious. Like, don't spray water inside of the you know motor itself, inside this vent area where it's already clean where the filter covers. Just spray where you need to spray water, and it's kind of like when you clean your engine bay. Just spray water where you need to spray it. Don't completely you know put the engine underwater inside of a complete fish tank or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, keep the water where it needs to go. Spray these pockets where it's dirty. Lightly spray the outside if you want to wipe it down. Just don't go crazy, and you'll be completely fine. Let it sit outside and dry, and you're, you won't have any issues.
Now this vacuum is the money vacuum. This is the one that has the nastiest stuff. So I'm gonna let you guys enjoy this clip here of the um, three inch thick layer of sludge that I found in this vacuum. Um, didn't have any mold on this one. The other one had a little bit of mold starting to grow even after like just a week of sitting inside the garage. This one um, was fairly fresh, which is why it's so liquidy, which sounds even more disgusting. Um, but yeah, this was the worst one by far. For this filter, once I removed it, I need to pick off all of that hair on the outside. It makes it a lot easier to kind of see what you're doing when you're spraying it. Plus, it's just simple, easy thing to do. So that way you don't have all that stuff flying everywhere. Now, if you need to expedite the drying process for your air filter, you know, one thing you can do is take one of the cone drill brushes or something similar in size that fits on the inside of that filter, wrap it in a microfiber towel so it kind of creates like a, a thicker area for it to fit inside of, um, and then just spin it. And if you spin it with the centrifugal force, will force all of that water to spray outwards. And this does help with removing a good bit of the water inside that filter and expedite the process while it sits outside in the sun. And this is why I said use a trash bag inside these smaller buckets because it makes cleanup easy when you do this sort of thing. Now if you have any sort of extractor, no matter what brand or size it is, one of the easiest ways to clean it is just plug it into the wall, turn on the vacuum portion of the extractor, and take the hose and just spray fresh clean water into it for a good bit of time. So that way you can completely flush one, the hose in the carpet extractor head, but also you get all of that clean water inside the rinse water bucket. Uh, or inside the dirty water portion of your extractor. So that way you can slush it around, swirl it around, and then dump all of that dirty water out and you know, you're gonna clean the inside of it really, really well. Now 
Now I'm gonna show you guys how I clean my microfiber towels. And this is a, you know, pretty thorough process and it seems like it might be a waste of time. But for me, this is the best method that I found, especially when I do some of these dirtier cars where I get my towels greasy or you know, oily, or you know, you have no idea what's even getting onto them. Um, for the towels like that, I soak inside of a bucket with Dawn dish soap, and that is where the grease cutting kind of comes in. Um, I kind of wring them out, you know, agitate them inside this bucket with you know dirty, you know, soapy water, and then I wring them out, and then I rinse them in my clean water bucket. So it's kind of like a two-bucket method, like you'd use on the outside of your car's paint. I use it for my dirty microfiber towels that I use on the inside of my cars. Now once I've wrung out all of the dirty dirty water out of these towels, I do run them through the washing machine um, with my outside towels and my inside towels done separately. And I use like a detergent like Tide Free because it's free of any additional additives and it's just a basic detergent soap. Um, and then run those through the washing machine on warm water. And then the same, I do tumble dry in the dryer itself. And that kind of maintains the fluffiness. It helps not break down the microfiber fibers within the towels. And it does a really good job at getting those things clean and ready for the next use. Now this is an ultrasonic cleaner and I've used this in several of my videos for cleaning bolts and things like that. Um, but I'm just putting my all-purpose cleaner mixed with a little bit of water and it does a really good job with just dunking all of my bristle brushes inside of the container along with my drill brushes and my pet brush just kind of all contained inside this thing with the bristles facing down. Um, it's got a temperature thing so it actually heats up the water itself and then I'll run it for about in this case 460 seconds or 480 seconds and let it you know send that ultrasonic waves through the water which will agitate all of those fibers loosen up any dirt inside of them making it easier to clean them Once they're done with this process, then I use my towel to you know, agitate those fibers, get any of that dirty water out of them, and then let them sit out to dry. Now, if you've picked up a foxtail pet detail and brush from foxclean.com, I recommend cleaning it, you know, even during use a little bit, taking your microfiber towel and wiping the dirt that kind of gets collected on each side of the blade and in between. It helps make it work a lot more efficiently during your pet detailing process, um, but especially do it after use. So that way the thing is ready for your next detail. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, this was a little bit of extra bonus video during the middle of the week. Um, I do have new videos coming out every Saturday, which are always the disaster deep cleans. And then on Thursdays, I'm doing these extra bonus videos for you guys. So if you like these sort of videos and you enjoyed today, give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys on Saturday.